Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another Super Tease video. We've got a monumental class update and changes video here. There is a lot going on with a lot of classes that you're going to need to know. You can already see just on the first one here. New, 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 new. I didn't expect this. I didn't expect this. I don't know where it came from. There have been some wishes that have been granted in this class update. So let's just start talking about them because they're that crazy, okay? Uh, first of all, we're gonna be talking about the Druid class. This is the class as a whole and the class talent tree. So this will be available to all Druid specs. All Druids are gonna learn to swipe at level 10. Um, swipe and Brutal Slash damage has been reduced by 50%, but this will be counteracted by a change below. Killer Instinct changed to two points, granting three to 6% physical damage and armor. So possibly opening up some abilities to get into Skull Bash a little bit more frequently or get maybe get some value possibly. Um, Nurturing Instinct has changed to two points, granting three to 6% magic damage and healing love these going down to two points new talent improved swipe increases the swipe and brutal slash damage by a hundred percent so i mean this is overall i think a buff right am i wrong somebody cal somebody calculate that out for me if i'm wrong but i think that's a buff new talent forest walk casting regrowth increases your movement speed and healing received by five percent for three to six seconds kind of meh honestly but this one this is the juice New talent, Gale Winds, increases Typhoon's radius by 20% and range by 5 yards. You know what I love about Wrath of Lich King Typhoon? Whew, this giant tidal wave knocking somebody all the way across the map. I'm really hoping that this is enough to hit that. For me, it, it, it looks like it might be close, um, but we'll have to wait and see. There's also a new talent, Incessant incessant tempest reducing the cooldown of typhoon by five seconds so no more frequently and powerful knockback effect new connection between rake and rip new connection between maim and towerless tireless pursuit so this is i went to remake my boom king guide they literally did this literally today after i did my boom king guide and now there's like some possible new combinations of talents and things i'm gonna have to we have to look at a little bit. Uh, new connections connecting Skull Bash to Primal Fury and Matted Fur. So again, possibilities for getting into Skull Bash. New connection between Verdant Heart and Iron Fur. Wild Growth has moved up and Remove Curse moved to the side. Thank God. Thank God. I was. I felt like I got pruned. I wasn't. I just couldn't decurse anymore. So hopefully this is going to alleviate that by now not having to go down through two abilities to get to it. Uh, improved Rejuvenation has moved up the tree. Sunfire has moved up and Star Surge has moved to the side. So I do wonder if Star Surge is more accessible for non-Boomkin Druids. Um, also, Sunfire being moved up will be interesting. Feral Druids now start with Rip instead of Thrash. I don't know how much that means for you. If that means that there's more options as Feral Druid deeper down in the tree. But overall, like, what? We're getting cool new stuff that I like. This is kind of meh. Uh, we're getting some buffs maybe to Feral Druid. A lot of two, three-pointers going down to two-pointers, which has always been good changes on every other class. So really amazing for Druid overall. Now we got spec-specific Druids. we got Boomkin. The balance tree has been redesigned. What is that? What is that word right there? Redesigned? Lunar Eclipse no longer increases the critical strike chance of Starfire. I don't know if I'm going to like this. Lunar Eclipse now increases the damage of Starfire fire deals to nearby enemies yeah i wasn't i didn't like that uh for pvp i don't like that because i don't care about starfire damage to nearby enemies i'd actually honestly prefer that it didn't hit any nearby enemies in pvp so this is actually a nerf sad face uh umbral intensity now further increases the damage starfire deals to nearby enemies by 10 to 20 percent again nearby enemies eh. circle of life and death has been removed what did you do to my you did not delete that New talent, Cosmic Rapidity. Your Moonfire, Sunfire, and Stellar Flare deal damage 13 to 25%. Is that not literally Circle of Life and Death? Except now, it's is it a two-point talent? I swear that that's Cycle of Life and Death, but now it's a two-point talent. This is tragedy for Boomkin. I mean, all this stuff is so good, and then... I'm, I'm very sad. Guardian Druid. Well, you know what? Sometimes you gotta turn to the turn to the dark side. Let's see what's going on with Guardian now. Guardian Druid has been redesigned. Ursine Adept is now baseline. Innervate can now be cast in bear form. I saw a lot of bear form druids complaining about that. Uh, front of the pack moved to row three. I don't know what that's gonna do for you, honestly. Uh, any Guardian Druids can let us know if that's a big deal. Flashing Claws switched positions with in reinvigoration. New talent, Thorns of Iron. 
Thorns? I like Thorns. When you cast Iron Fur, you deal physical damage equal to 30% of your armor split among enemies within 12 yards. <laughs> Scardian Druid back. Is this thing going to randomly be insane? <laughs> New talent. Raise. Strike with the Might of Ursoc, dealing physical damage to all enemies in front of you. A big cone hit. Deals reduced damage beyond five targets. New talent, Moonless Knight. When you cast a single target ability on an enemy afflicted by Moonfire, you cause them to burn for an additional 10% arcane damage. New talent, Lunar Beam. That's not really new. Summons a beam of lunar light at your location, dealing arcane damage and healing you. Pathing has been restructured. Uh, Earth Warden, Tooth and Claw, Reinforced Fur, and After the Wildfire, Guardian of a Loon now have connections into the final gate section. So complete revamp. Pulverize, Bloody Frenzy, and Twin Moonfire have found slightly different homes. Okay, we're going to have to like look. Guardian Druid's going to look at your talents because this looks like it's completely overhauled. Vicious Cycle, Fury of Nature, and Scintillating Moonlight have also changed icons. It's a little bit of a facelift. Now, Feral Druid. What's going on with Feral Druid? Uh, Circle of Life and Death, damage over time, duration, compressed, reduced to 20%, down from 25%. So they really didn't like Circle of Life and Death. Uh, taste for blood bonus to ferocious by damage increased to 4% to 8% per bleed on the target up from 2 to 4%. So uh, it looks like they do want ferocious bite builds to be somewhat viable because it seemed like they like went over the top with the bleed build being so much better than it. So maybe now they're trying to double back a little or backpedal a little bit. Um, will this be enough? Who knows? Let's see. Rampant ferocity damage increased to 35% of ferocious bite damage up from 25%. Dreadful bleeding bonus to rip damage has been reduced to 15%. Infected wounds bonus damage to rake has also been reduced to 25%. Vein ripper increased the bleed durations increased to 33% was 25%. Lunar inspiration damage increased 66%. So they want that moonfire cat, kitty cat coming back. But some bleed damage nerfs here, which honestly, I mean, for feral and PVP at least specifically... I think you're going to be fine um, with that. Tear open wounds moved to row four. Survival instincts moved to row five. Infected wounds moved to row five. Berserk has moved to row six. Moment of clarity, row seven. Berserk, Heart of the Lion, and Berserk Frenzy moved within row seven and connections changed. Position of wild slashes and brutal strikes swapped in their choice node. Lunar inspiration now has a choice node with Feral Frenzy. So again, Feral Druids, it's like a whole new expansion for you again. Here we go. Um, but it does look like some nerfs towards the bleed build, trying to get more emphasis on talents that were likely just not being selected at all, which has seems to be on you know target for what they want to do in terms of parity of talents. Preservation Evoker uh, redesigned the delivery method for temporal anomalies. Absorb shields. Absorb shields are now applied to all allies it passes through with absorb effectiveness reduced beyond five. Was pulses three times and heals two allies. Its speed has also been increased to forty percent. The orb will no longer slow down when it detects an ally in its radius. Uh, temporal anomaly cooldown increased to fifteen seconds from six seconds and Norsdomu's teachings has been redesigned now now reduces the cooldown of empowered spells by five seconds when temporal anomaly is cast so i wasn't playing temporal anomaly honestly as preservation it was i didn't really like having the extra key bind and in pvp specifically it's really tough to like aim it you know it's kind of like the earthen wall totem problem in pvp so i'm not really a big fan of this thing getting some attention personally um resonating sphere now applies echo to the first six allies it passes through and time of need cooldown has reduced to 60 seconds so this is an automatic proccing heal and this is really powerful getting this down to 60 seconds uh, uh maybe i'll try temporal anomaly but i really don't like having another key bind on an ability my allies are going to run away from personally marksmanship hunters mm hunters are mad about this one salvo has been redesigned your next multi-shot or volley now applies explosive shot to up to two targets hit 45 second cooldown and right here this one they hit you where it hurts mm hunters they hit you where it hurts you didn't have any defense but you did have a lot of burst and maybe not anymore double tap has been removed and has been replaced by tactical reload in the talent tree what's tactical reload you say well what do you know it's right here Aim shot and rapid fire cooldowns reduced by 10%. That is not nearly the same punch packed into double tap. Sadly, that is not that is not even close. Uh, tactical reload and steady focus have swapped positions in the talent tree. Calling the shots now reduces the cooldown of true shot by two and a half seconds per 50 focus spent up from a one and a half seconds. So again, uh, trying to maybe you know open up some talent options here. So MM hunters. At least in PvP, I don't think you're too happy about this. Mistweaver Monk. What's going on with Mistweaver Monk? New talent, Shaylun's Gift. Again, new talent. What is this? Draws in all nearby clouds of mist, healing up to three nearby allies per cloud absorbed. A cloud of mist is generated every eight seconds while in combat. New talent, Veil of Pride, increases Shaylun's Gift cloud of mist generation to every four seconds. New talent, Shao House Lessons. Each time you cast Shaylun's Gift, you will learn 
uh, one of Shao Hao's lessons of up to 30 seconds based on how many clouds of mist are consumed. I don't even understand what that means. Mistweaver monks, you got to convert this to English for me, please. Uh, new talent, lesson of doubt. You do up to 30% more damage and healing to targets based on their current health. Ooh. Lesson of despair. Your critical strike is increased by 25% while above 80% health. That's some big rising sun kick crits. Lesson of fear decreases your damage taken by 15% and increases your haste by 20%. Whoa. Lesson of anger. 20% of the damage or healing you deal is duplicated every four seconds. Punch monks, I think, are coming back here. New talent, burst of life. Life cocoon's cooldown is reduced by 20 seconds, but it absorbs amount is reduced by 40%. When life cocoon expires, it releases a burst of mist that restores health to three nearby allies. Choice, no choice node with calming coalescence. Revival healing now increased by 100% while not in raid. Oh my god, this ability was already so strong. Uh, oh my god, Mr. Reaver monks, you are you are uh, ooh. you are already competing pretty close for the number one healer at least when it comes to PvP. Yeah, you're looking pretty scary now. Added a connection from Veil of Pride and Shao Ha's Lessons node to the Rising Mist and Tier of Morning Choice node. Bone Dust, oh, Bone Dust Brew has been removed and replaced with Shailun's Gift. Ooh. Attention, attenuation removed and replaced with Shao Ha's Lessons. Lessons and Bountiful Brew removed and replaced with Veil of Pride. So these, these are new, but they're replacing some pretty big ones like Bone Dust Brew. Curious to see how this plays out. It's definitely playing towards the Punch Monk strat, I think. Um, which I, I think a lot of monks want to be getting more aggressive, so this is good. Holy Paladin, what's going on? Blessing of Winter has been redesigned. This is the snaring one. It now restores 1% mana per 2 seconds. Only cast about, Can you cast it on yourself? I really hope you can cast this on yourself, because Paladin mana is just so bad. This could be a really cool way of having mana regen, because that's something I liked about older iterations of Paladin, such as Divine Plea. So I really hope you can cast this on yourself. I would think that you can. So nice little mana restore tool here for Holy Paladins. Avenging Crusader now costs 5 Holy Power. Previously, it was 50% base mana. Reduced its cooldown to 45 seconds from 2 minutes. And its duration has been reduced to 12 seconds from 20... You get mana regen and you are, they want you getting in the fight, Paladins. You better get ready to get in the fight. Tower of Radiance now causes Holy Light and Flash of Light to additionally have a chance to grant Holy Power based on your target's current health when cast on targets without Beacon of Light, increasing to 100% on targets below 50%. And Inflorescence of the Sunwell now grants a Holy Power every third cast of Holy Light with Infusion of Light was 30% chance. So just a guaranteed um, proc chance. Holy Paladins are getting some really big changes here. This, this is crazy for Holy Paladin. I feel like you didn't need it, so... Feels good to be a Holy Paladin on this update. New talent for Priest. Petrifying Scream. Psychic Scream causes enemies to tremble in place rather than fleeing away. Eh. Surge of Light now properly triggers from all healing spells. Uh, and the root effect of Void Tendrils is now displayed on enemy nameplates. Okay, so some quality life changes here. Uh, for Discipline Priest, what are we getting here? There's a lot of stuff. Pain Transformation now causes Pain Suppression to heal your target for 25% of their health, up from 12%. Protector of the Frail now also grants Pain Suppression an additional charge. Two charges. Pain to Light's Wrath now costs 2% of base mana. I honestly don't remember what it cost before. Uh, Power Word Solace Damage Reduced. Eee, we don't like that. I don't like that. As a Disc Priest lover, and that's like my favorite ability. I don't like that. Mind Blast now costs 1.6% of the base mana, down from 2.5%. Painful Punishment now increases the duration of Shadow Word Pain or Purge the Wicked by 1.5 seconds, up from 0.7 seconds. Embrace the Shadow now increases the duration of Shadow Covenant by 8, up from 4. Twilight Corruption has been redesigned. Shadow Covenant increases the damage and healing of Shadow Spells by an additional... 10%. Shadow Covenant now converts Penance to a Shadow Spell. Dark Reprimand Shadow Penance can now be cast on allies. Stolen Psyche has been redesigned and renamed to Abyssal Reverie. Atonement heals for 10 to 20% more when activated by Shadow Spells. They really want to emphasize the Shadow side of the tree. People must not be taking these talents. Train of Thought causes Powered Souls to trigger a cooldown reduction for Penance in addition to Smite. <sighs> Blaze of Light increases the damage of Powered Solace in addition to Smite and Penance. Wheel and Woe increases the damage of Powered Solace in addition to Smite. Wrath Unleashed increases the damage of Powered Solace in addition to Smite. Dude, what is this buffs? Harsh Discipline can trigger from Powered Solace and Mind Blast in addition to Smite. This talent is no longer tracked through Smite and instead appears on Personal Resource Display. Void Summoner now can trigger from Powered Solace in addition to Smite, Mind Blast, and Penance. And added a few connections to the sides of Row 6 and 8 for Discipline. Fix an issue preventing Dark Reprimand from from consuming power of the dark side so bug fixes and buffs 
for Disciplined Priest. Really big changes here. Holy Priest, Burning Vehement. I'm not even going to try again. And Searing Light have swapped positions in the talent tree. Searing Light is now a one point talent. Smite and Holy Nova deal 25% increased damage to targets affected by Holy Fire. Unchanged. Uh, Burning Vehement. Vehement is now a two point talent. Has been redesigned, increasing the damage of Holy Fire up to 30%. Holy Fire deals 30% of its additional damage to nearby enemies within 12 yards. So trying to give you some AoE damage from Mythic Plus. Curious to see if that has any play in PvP. Uh, Prayers of the Virtuous now increases the maximum stack count of prayer mending by two per point. For Shadow, we've got resolved an issue with Shadow versions of Divine Star and uh, Halo to cost less mana than the Holy versions. Divine Star now generates six insanity. Halo will generate insanity, and Mind Games will also generate insanity. For Resto Shamans, Healing Tide's getting a 100% buff. You better be getting ready to kill some Healing Tide totems. That's a big buff there for Resto Shamans. That's a big boy. You got to be killing that thing. Okay, Warlocks, what are we looking at? Soul Keeper has been redesigned. I, this, I never really liked this one, so what's going to go on with this? Summons a Soul Keeper that consumes all Tormented Souls you've collected, blasting nearby enemies for chaos damage per soul consumed over 8 seconds. Uh, you collect Tormented Souls from each target you kill and occasionally escaped Souls you previously collected. Inquisitor's Gaze is now passive and has been redesigned. Thank God. Your spells and abilities have a chance to summon an Inquisitor's Eye that deals chaos damage over time. I much prefer that. I hated having to rebuff this every time I rezzed and stuff. That makes a lot of sense. Souls Keeper scaling its duration based on souls consumed has felt a bit awkward to you, so we're revising the spell to scale its damage instead. Inquisitor's Gaze has been active all the time, lends itself to have having lower throughput than we like. We redesigned it to be a frequent proc that deals considerable damage instead of a buff you click and forget. So these are really good changes. Oh, they removed Soul Tap. Thank God I hated this thing. You couldn't use it unless you were like max shield charged. It was really, uh, it was a really weird ability to use. Pandemic Invocation has been moved to row six and now a one rank talent. Uh, new talent, Focused Malignancy. Malefic Rapture deals 15 to 30% increased damage to targets suffering from unstable affliction. Soul Swap has been redesigned. Copies your damage over time effects from the target, preserving their duration. Your next use of Soul Swap within 10 seconds will exhale a copy of the effects on your new target. Ooh, does this include haunts? Does this include all your dots? Can you get like a double of that AoE heal thingy? Oh, this could be... Ooh, this is the old school soul swap. This is the soul swap that's hard to use. You're not gonna be able to just instantly dot people anymore. This is the this is the hard one. But it, but it could be insane if it copies haunt and stuff. Very curious to see this one play out. With regards to Affliction, its rotational global cooldown GCD traffic has been a bit higher than we'd like. Soul Tap in particular, we're cutting to help lessen GCD traffic. It's heavy reliance on add-ons to tell what's available for use. In its place, we've added Focus Malignancy, a favorable, fa favored conduit from Shadowlands that helps Affliction's single target profile. Lastly, Soul Swap's current iteration hasn't been as desirable as we'd like. To address this, we're testing an older iteration of Soul Swap uh, that should help with Affliction's ramp. So it, it's both ways, right? Like now you're, if you're getting trained, you're not going to get a free row of dots on somebody. But if you get a row of dots, you can swap them around. I, I, I think I prefer the skill cap of the old school soul swap, but we have to wait and see it all play out. Now for Arms Warrior, defensive stance is now talented by default. Shuffle the positions of some nodes towards the end of the tree and add some new connections to try and aid the creation of more general builds. Valor in victory, now only one rank and now provides 1% versatility, reduces the cooldown of divide by the sword by 30 seconds. Big deal right there. New talent, improved slam, has a 10% chance to critically strike and deals 30% more crit damage. Improved overpower and battle lord now increases the damage of dreadnought. Battle lord's chance to reset the cooldown of mortal strike and cleave increased to 35% up from 25%. And skull splitter will now cause deep wounds to expire instantly. Tides of blood now only it causes Ren to expire instantly as Deep Wounds is built into Skull Splitter. Sweeping Strikes is now Baseline. New Talent, Spiteful Serenity. Colossus Smash and Avatar's durations are doubled, but their bonuses are halved. I really like that type of flavor. Trying to, you know, take your class away from burst and more into sustain damage, especially for PvP. So, I mean, the quality of life and changes and improvements here for the classes overall, other than the Boomkin Starfire thing, which I'm really upset about. Uh, pretty crazy definitely targeting classes that needed some help and it looks like we got a couple of pvp changes uh precognition duration increased to five seconds uh, and now also prevents cast pushback and the chrysalis pvp talent it will now only be reducing the cooldown of life cocoon by 30 seconds instead of 45 so unnerfing that or i read nerfing it i guess um and that makes sense with the change we saw towards the cooldown of life cocoon previously and mystery is also really strong so i'm not I don't think this is going to be the end of the world here for you for Mistweaver. I think the other changes you got, potentially a fist weaving build, is going to be absolutely nuts. These were big changes, insane changes coming here for the class. You definitely want to check these ones out. Very curious to see how it all plays out. Um, absolutely insane. 
other than that, thank you very much for watching the video. If you want to stay up to date with changes like this moving into the future so you're never missing a beat, then do make sure to hit the subscribe button. Uh, and I also greatly appreciate your support. Uh, anyways, thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.